Before trying to make biodiesel at home, please read Biodiesel Do-It-Yourself Production Basics, available online at www.atra.ncat.org. Please read and comply with all the safety precautions listed in the publication. In the past, many biodiesel enthusiasts made a demonstration batch using a kitchen blender. We strongly recommend that you do not make biodiesel in a blender. The high speed of operation can cause splashing of caustic chemicals and rubber and plastic parts can degrade and leak. The easiest and safest method to try a small batch of biodiesel is the one originated by the users at biodieselcommunity.org. Nicknamed the Dr. Pepper technique, it utilizes a 2 liter plastic soda bottle as a sealed mixing vessel to safely mix a small batch. To make your first batch of biodiesel, You'll need one liter of new vegetable cooking oil, a catalyst, either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, methanol, commonly available as heat fuel line treatment, and in the yellow bottle do not get iso heat in the red bottle. That's isopropyl alcohol. The equipment you'll need is a clean, dry two liter soda bottle, a measuring cup or graduated beaker, a scale, a glass jar to mix methanol and catalyst to produce methoxide, and a funnel. You'll also need rubber gloves and safety glasses. This is very important. Make sure you always use safety equipment when mixing biodiesel. Okay, let's get started. Let me begin by saying that mi mixing methoxide is the most potentially hazardous step in the biodiesel process. Make sure that you mix the methanol and the catalyst in a clean glass jar with a tight fitting lid. Do not mix in a plastic container because the container may dissolve. Do your mixing in a well ventilated area as methanol fumes can be toxic. Begin by measuring 4 grams of sodium hydroxide or 5.6 grams of potassium hydroxide using your scale. Add the catalyst to your clean glass mixing jar. Measure 250 milliliters of methanol using a graduated beaker or measuring cup. Add the methanol to the glass mixing jar with the catalyst. Stir the methoxide mixture until the catalyst is completely dissolved. You can also cover the jar with a tight fitting lid and mix the methoxide by swirling or shaking. But be very careful that your lid is screwed on tightly and completely free of leaks. It'll take a few minutes for the catalyst to dissolve completely, so be patient. The mixture creates heat, and the chemical reaction takes place, and the jar will feel warm. This is a normal reaction. Next, let's measure your oil. We're going to use a 1 liter soda bottle, and we'll measure 1 liter of oil, and use the funnel to pour it into a 2 liter soda bottle. You will get a better reaction if the oil is warm. About 140 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal. You can heat the oil in a pan on the stove or just leave it in the sun for an hour. If you choose to preheat the oil, be very careful not to get the, ho the oil hotter than 140 degrees. Add the methoxide solution to your oil. Use a funnel and be careful not to spill. If you spill, clean up the material immediately with paper towels and dispose of the contaminated paper towels safely. Put the cap on the soda bottle and shake vigorously for about 30 seconds. Let the mixture settle and then shake about every 10 seconds for 10 minutes. Repeat this three times. Allow the bottle to stand for about an hour. The mixture will begin to clear almost immediately and a layer of darker liquid will begin to form on the bottom of the bottle. The darker layer at the bottom of the bottle is glycerol, the byproduct of the transesterification process. You can now drain off the glycerol by taking off the bottle cap, covering the mouth of the bottle with your thumb, and inverting the bottle. Wear gloves. Allow the glycerol to collect in the neck of the bottle, and then use your thumb as a valve to drain the darker liquid into another container. Discard the glycerol by composting, or use it as a degreaser. What remains in the bottle is usable biodiesel.